Hi, welcome to the podcast for When the Curves Line Up for August 5th through 10th, featuring Saturn's evening appearance. Please see the article that includes diagrams of the events on the website at whenthecurveslineup.com. Text by Jeffrey L. Hunt. Saturn, the most distant planet that is easily visible to the unaided eye, enters the evening sky earlier each night. On the 10th, Saturn rises 74 minutes after the Sun, appearing 2 to 3 minutes earlier each night. By 2 hours after nightfall, it is nearly 10 degrees up in the east-southeast. Less than halfway up in the sky, it is in the south, 5 hours before sunrise. During morning twilight, Saturn is over 30 degrees above the southwest horizon. The planet nears opposition, when Earth passes between a more distant solar system body and the Sun. This year's opposition occurs on September 7, when the planet rises in the eastern sky at sunset, appears in the southern sky near midnight, and sets in the western sky at sunrise. The planet is closest to Earth and shines brightest in the sky. Through a telescope, the rings are easy to spot, along with up to eight of its largest satellites. Titan the second largest moon in the solar system, appears as an orange star to the ring's eastern edge. Its globe is visible with high telescopic powers. Saturn revolves around the Sun every 29.5 years. Like Earth, it is tilted with respect to its orbital plane. With a tilt of 26.7 degrees, Earth-bound telescopes see changing views of the planet and the ring system, while the planet maintains this angle. Currently, the rings are tilted less than 3 degrees, nearly edge on, like looking at the edge of a plate, rather than more from the top. Since 2009, the planet has presented the northern hemisphere toward Earth, along with a view of the ring's north side. During March 2025, sky watchers view the ring's edge on. During the next 14 years, the planet's southern hemisphere and ring's southern side are easily visible, followed by another ring plane crossing in 2039. Then another long spell occurs when the northern hemisphere is presented to Earth again. At least seven sections of the ring have been identified. Made of fragments of ices, the rings vary in brightness. The brightest section, known as the B-ring, was the first observed and likely appear in Galileo's drawings of the planet, although he did not identify them as rings. The A-ring is outermost and separated from the B-ring by the Cassini division, a gap in the ring set. The C, or crepe, ring is the dimmest of the three and closest to Saturn, often hidden by the glare from the B-ring and the planet's clouds. Not visible through Sky Watcher's telescopes, the E-ring was first observed in 1966. The remaining three rings were first observed by spacecraft during close-up views during 1979 and 1980. At the ring plane crossing, the rings are seen edge on and may seem to disappear. More of the planet's moons are visible through the world's largest telescopes. The planet has about 150 satellites, although most are small and beyond the views of backyard telescopes. One could argue that the individual bodies in the rings are moons, although to be classified as a Saturnian satellite, the object's orbit is calculated so it can be tracked a difficult task for small fragments. As Earth overtakes Saturn, the ringed wonder retrogrades in front of a dim Aquarius starfield. Normally, the planets appear to move eastward compared to the starry background. When Earth overtakes them, the line of sight shifts westward and the planet seems to move backwards against the starfield. Use a binocular to monitor Saturn's westward progress through November, when the line of sight shifts eastward again. The entire retrograde, that began a month ago, appears in a single binocular field of view. Find an opportunity to see Saturn through a telescope at a public sky watching night at a local planetarium or with a local astronomy club. Thank you for listening. Please read the articles at whenthecurveslineup.com.